as you can see, the Iron Man suit is complete. For anyone just tuning in, I have had two previous videos showing the build process of this 3D printed Iron Man suit, and now it is finished. So this is video three, and I'm gonna be talking about everything that I've learned since my last video. I had it looking really good in the last video. Most of what I had left to do was adding in the electronics and I've got all of those working now. So it has a few main things. The helmet can open, the eyes can turn on and there's some sound effects in there. The body has some lights around it, little ones and then the arc reactor. And then I've got lights in the hands as well. Little repulsors in the hand when I tilt my hand back. So I got those added in, it was a lot of fun and they actually work quite well. I was also able to take this costume and debut it at WonderCon in Anaheim with a bunch of other Iron Man cosplayers, which was a ton of fun, and I'll talk more about that too. The lights in the hands are just a cheap disassembled flashlight that I added a switch to. They, they aren't connected to any computer source or anything like that. There's no programming. It's just a button turns them on. Stop pushing the button, turn that off. And I've got that on the front of the forearm. So when I tilt my wrist back, it just pushes the button and that turns on the light. The lights, sound, and motorization in the helmet are powered by the Alicia board made by Crashworks. They sell this pre-made Arduino board that has everything programmed into it. So it's really basically just plug and play. It is super helpful. And they also sent a lot of information along with the supplies. So that's how the helmet works. And while I did run into a couple issues, most of those issues were my end not on the, the boards end or anything like that. In the body, I have LED lights driven by some little boards that I got from a company called Planet Lanterna. They saw my 3D printing build video, like my first or second one, and they reached out to me about providing a couple of those boards. And they're small, they're easy to use, and it comes with an app, so you can actually control them with your phone, which is pretty nifty. And you can just do all of the programming so that it's the color you want, the brightness you want, the number of LEDs that you want. I've got one that controls the arc reactor in the chest, and I've got one that controls the 10 lights that are around the torso. I've got six on the front and four on the back. And I was actually very pleased with how well these worked. Uh, programming them, took a little bit of time and effort to understand, but it was nothing crazy. And it's not like you have to know computer programming, it's just, the app is good, but not an amazing UI. So you do have to learn where to go in to put in your numbers and stuff. But overall, I liked it. So after adding in all of the padding and straps and everything to hold it all together, I was able to, you know, I would wear it for a little bit, move around, see what did work, didn't work. I didn't actually have too many changes because of all the other people who have done Iron Man suits and all of the guides they've done, especially Frankly Built. If you've seen any other Iron Man tutorial stuff on YouTube, his is probably the most well known, but there were others I followed as well. And I got to meet up with and hang out with them at the convention in my Iron Man suit. So that was a lot of fun as well. Getting the suit all made and wearable with all the electronics, that went pretty well. So headed down to WonderCon in Anaheim. Uh, I was invited there by Frank from Frankly Built to join in uh, with, with the Iron Idiots as they walked around. Guys, if you have not been to WonderCon, like if you're into cosplay, this place is like the holy land for cosplay, I think. I was blown away by the number and quality of cosplays at this thing. It was just astounding. I saw some of the most creative, some of the highest quality, the funniest stuff there. It was astounding. Check out the costume work in this amazing video by Mamuro5254. This is less than one tenth of the incredible footage in his video, and his video captured less than one tenth of the amazing costumes I saw. And I especially have to give a huge thank you shout out to the other Iron Man cosplayers who were there with me, or I guess who I was there with them, um, especially Frank, Kiera, and Emily. I'll put all their social stuff in the description. They're all amazing Iron Man cosplayers that I have followed and learned from in the past. And they were, they were very gracious and helped take care of me at being at a convention for the first time. Uh, made the experience so much nicer, so much smoother. So very, very grateful to them and go follow them if you have any interest in anything like this. Also a big thank you to Nick and Tyler who helped us out being our handlers. They would just like open doors for us and get people to move out of the way and tell us if we were about to accidentally start walking down some stairs because we don't have good visibility, uh, helping direct and move us where we needed to go for photos. It would have been a nightmare without you guys. So thank you all very much. I think in the end we had like nine or 10 people in different Iron Man costumes. It was 
so much fun. When I put this on, before it was all up and ready, I talked about how it was kind of stiff and not very flexible and I couldn't do much and that did not change. It kept being very stiff and inflexible. In the end, I actually only wore it for about two hours. After that, the position I was being held in with like this perfect exaggerated posture and the weight of the whole suit basically ends up resting on my shoulders. Um, after about two hours of it, I was done. Um, there's definitely some little comfort things I could do. I felt like it was digging in, in a couple spots where I would want to add some more padding. Uh, but for the most part, I just chose a design that's so slim fitting that it is much more of a be a pretty statue than it is like a action hero, run around, interact with a lot of stuff kind of costume. So I, I'm still glad. I think I made the right choice. That is what I was going for. I wanted something as sleek and slick and form fitting as I could make it. And I really did at the cost of mobility and comfort. So I love what I got. I definitely am glad I did it and I want to wear it again at other conventions. I just don't want to wear it for long periods of time. <laughs> Even the two hours, I was just like, oh, I should probably limit it to one hour or something like that because it, it wears on you. And this was my first time doing it. So uh, ma major props to the other Iron Man cosplayers who can do it for like hours. I hope your suit is more comfortable. And I think it probably is a little bit, but also they're just better at it. As always, a huge thank you shout out to my Patreon supporters. I couldn't do projects like this without you. If you're interested in joining my Patreon, the link for that is down in the description. I asked you guys on Instagram what questions you had about the suit, so now I'm going to answer some of those. Uh, first question, what printer did you start with and do you need to be knowledgeable about computer coding? I worked with two different Ender printers. I used an Ender 3 V2 and an Ender Max Neo. The Ender 3 was graciously sent to me by one of my Patreon supporters, Rob Colthard, because he thought I could do some fun stuff with it, and that was amazing. Thank you, Rob. And I then reached out to the manufacturers of the printer and told them what I was doing, and they said we can send you another bigger printer, so that's when I got the Max Neo. Um, computer coding, no, it's there's so many tutorials on how to do all the 3D printing stuff. None of it is anything I would consider coding. It does take a little practice, but it's definitely something you could do. Someone said, can it fly? No. Did anyone you meet at the con watch the videos you made? I think there were one or two people who, who recognized me at the con, um, not because I was in an Iron Man suit, but just from other video work, but mostly no. Did you get any compliments from the other Iron Man cosplayers? I did, they were very gracious and they had lots of nice things to say about it and some suggestions which I was very glad to get because they absolutely know more than me and their costumes were all amazing. Were you impressed by the costumes of other Iron Man cosplayers? Yeah, absolutely. Just blew me away. How did you make sure the build fits you? There's lots of tutorials on how to make sure these builds fits. I used a program called Armorsmith that lets you digitally modify the files to fit a, a digital mannequin of your body and that helped a lot too. Did you design the pieces yourself? No, these are files from a company called DO3D. They've got tons of cool 3D files, including a bunch of Iron Man stuff. Did anything break during your day wearing it? I was actually amazed. Nothing really broke. The only issue I had with functionality is the connection. I have I have a button in the jaw that's supposed to open the faceplate. And the connection through the ear pieces was not always very stable. And so half the time my mask and lights would work in the head and half the time it wouldn't because I didn't have that solid connection. So I have to upgrade that. But nothing actually broke. So I was surprised, a uh, little bit of paint wear. I uh, got some questions that I don't really know. Uh, how heavy is it? I haven't weighed the whole thing separately. I wanna say probably like 25-ish pounds for the whole thing, it's not very heavy. Total print time, I also don't know that. I printed it over the course of several months and I wasn't carefully tracking every individual piece print. How much did it cost in the end? Uh, I did not do a really careful cost analysis, but I spent about $300 on filament, I spent about $300 on paint, and then probably three to four hundred dollars on just other assorted stuff. So I think around a thousand dollars is what I put into all of the supplies. And then I don't know how you calculate my time, but yeah, about a thousand. What filament did you use? I just used some PLA Plus filament. Um, I went with that because it's supposed to be like the safest and nicest to print indoors. Like there's no fumes or toxicity or anything like that. So it's just really easy and it works with the printers I had. PLA plus. Is it comfortable to wear and you can you sit down while wearing it? No and no. It's not particularly comfortable. It's not actively hurting me, like at least unless I've been wearing it for hours and the weight is getting to me. And no, I can't even think about sitting down. Not a chance. How many kilograms of filament did it use? Uh, I think I ended up buying about 15 kilograms 
probably only would have needed 12 if nothing messed up, something like that. How much do you sweat inside that thing? It is very warm. It, it is, there's not a lot of ventilation. Like there are gaps and everything, but for the most part, it's a covering over every part of my body. So yeah, it is very warm. Is the sound of plastic rubbing together annoying? Is it, if so, is it avoidable? It is, uh, it's not so much rubbing, it's, it's bouncing and moving. So when we had nine or 10 Ironmen walking together, it was just, it was like a, 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 you had a barrel full of plastic pieces and you're just shaking it. That's what it sounded like. So much plastic rattling noises. And you can do things to mitigate it. You can add padding, you can add like clear sticker coatings in places, but in the end, it is made of plastic. You are gonna move, plastic pieces are gonna bump other plastic pieces and you are gonna have that sound and it's not avoidable. Are you planning on building another suit? Not particularly Iron Man, just another cosplay in general. Maybe, um, we'll see. I have some other ideas that I may get around to at some point, but I'm not sure. Overall, this was a ton of fun, but it did take a lot of time and work. So if I do another one, I'll try and come up with an idea that isn't quite as process heavy as this one. Thanks for watching. If you've seen all three videos and you still have questions about how it was made, ask down in the comments and I'll try and answer.